Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about the mean value theorem. As a reminder, you're going to want to pause and try the examples if you're prompted to do so, and there are always free guided notes available. So to begin, let's take a look at what the mean value theorem actually says. Suppose y equals f of x is continuous over the closed interval from a to b and differentiable over the interior. Then there is at least one point c in that interior where f of b minus f of a over b minus a equals f prime of c. So what I would recommend first is just take a second to actually write this down, read it over, and, and try to figure out what does this actually mean. Can you draw a picture? Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so let's try to think about what this actually means. So we're talking about two points from A to B, and so notice in the, the statement of the theorem, it says nothing about what the points have to actually equal. So if I go back to this, it just says that this function has to be continuous and differentiable, but nothing about what A and B have to be. So if I'm just trying to figure out what this means, here's an F of A right here, and then we'll draw some other point over here. We'll make this on F of B. Let me make this a little more clear. We'll make this F of A. Okay, so what is this trying to get at then? So I'm gonna just draw some sort of function like this in between. And so it says that there has to be a point C where F prime of C equals this. So what is this? Well, this, you might remember, this actually is just talking about the average value of a function, right? So if I go through like this and connect this, the, this formula here just gets me that slope. So we know about this slope in between, and now it's saying that there's some f prime of c that this would equal to. So what this is trying to get at then is that there is somewhere on this curve that will basically have this slope. And you could kind of just eyeball this to figure this out. So like if I look at this point here, this look, this tangent line on the curve looks like it might be parallel. Or maybe even this line here so you're just guaranteed to have some point where you will have this tangent line with this particular slope. That's what the mean value theorem is getting at. Okay, so it's not uncommon with this to just have to actually play around with the mean value theorem. So this question asks you to find values of C that work for this. So this is basically just kind of following the formula and plugging things in. Here's your closed interval from A to B. You know, you're gonna have to find a derivative and then eventually you'll find the C. So why don't you pause the video and take a stab at this and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so obviously I'm gonna have to know what F of three is, which will just be the square root of four, so this equals two. And then I'll obviously also have to know what F of zero is, which is gonna come down to the square root of one, so that equals one. Okay, the other thing that I'm clearly gonna have to know is what the derivative is. So if I take the derivative, I have to use the chain rule. So this will be 1 half times 1 plus x to the negative 1 half, all of this times the derivative of the inside, which is just 1. The derivative of x is just 1. So if I just write this in maybe a slightly nicer format, this will look like this. 1 over 2 times the square root of 1 plus x. Okay, so now I have to find some c where this equals this whole thing. So maybe I'll just start with, with this side here, so just plugging in those values. So this becomes 2 minus 1 over uh, 3 minus 0. And then that has to equal f prime of c. So right now I just have f prime of x, so now I have to plug in c for this. So I get 1 over 2 times the square root of 1 plus c. So now I basically have to solve for c, right? So um, let me clear some space so that I can actually figure this out. And now let's forge ahead. So I get one over three equals one over two times the square root of one plus C. So um, let's multiply both sides uh, by the reciprocals actually. So let's just flip everything upside down. So um, I'm gonna get two times the square root of one plus C is now gonna equal three. And so then I'm gonna have the square root of one plus C equals three over two. And now I can square both sides to get rid of the square root. So I get one plus C equals nine over four. And then if I subtract one, that's equivalent to subtracting four over four. So my C will equal 
5 over 4. And so voila, there's our C somewhere in between 0 and 3. So we're good to go. All right. So same exercise here. Um, if you want to give this a try one more time, just hit pause and then hit play when you're ready. So once again, so I've got to figure out what is f of negative 2. So let's see, that's going to be 3 times 4 minus 12 minus 5. So this will just equal negative 5. And then f of 1, so we just plug that in. And so I've got negative 5 and, and 4, so I'll need that information shortly. And then I also need to know what f prime of x is, so this is just 6x plus 6. So now I can start plugging everything in. So I take 4 minus negative 5 over 1 minus negative 2, and that has to equal f prime of c. So I need to plug in c into my derivative, so this is what I have to solve. So it looks like what I end up getting here, this is 9 divided by 3 equals 6c plus 6, not c. And then I can continue over here. So I get 3 equals 6c plus 6, therefore 6c equals negative 3, so therefore c will equal negative 1 half. So bada bing, bada boom, you're good to go. All right, so now let's talk about something a little bit trickier here which is determine whether the functions satisfy the hypotheses of the mean value theorem on the given interval. So now this is really testing if you understand what the mean value theorem actually said. So if I go back to the statement of this, so look what this, this says. It says that you have to have this function is continuous on the closed interval and differentiable over the interior. So those are kind of part of the hypotheses that we have to think about when we're actually working on this. So if we think then about how this is actually going to work, um, we would have to kind of confirm these things. So first of all, I have x to the fourth fifths. So we're taking really a, a fifth root of this. So there aren't really any problem areas with that function. You know that this is definitely going to be something that is um, going to be continuous. So we know that we're going to have continuity really on the whole interval. Um, and then differentiable. So let's just take a look here. If I were to take the derivative of this guy, so let's see, I get 4 fifths x to the negative 1 fifth, so that gives me 4 over 5 times the fifth root of x. Okay, so now we just have to think about, is there any problem with the derivative? Is there any place maybe where the derivative wouldn't exist? And if you're thinking about this, so you can't plug in x equals 0 into the derivative, right? However, if I go back to the hypotheses, it says that you just have to be differentiable over the interior. So if I look at this problem, 0 is not actually, 0 is an endpoint, right? It's not on the interior. So what that tells me then is that this is otherwise going to be differentiable on the interior, so we're good to go. So this actually does indeed satisfy the hypotheses. Okay, so this one will not, and I want you to pause the video and take some time to figure out why that is. Okay, so now if I take f prime of x, so once again this thing's going to be continuous everywhere, so I just have to take the derivative, so this will be 2x to the negative one-third, which is really f prime of, uh, not, not x, there we go, 2 over the cube root of x. Well, now we have once again that same thing, right? 0 is not, this is not going to work at x equals 0, and 0 is actually on the interior of this point. So, not differentiable, so really we'll say maybe the derivative does not exist. So that's a point on the interior, so it would not satisfy the hypotheses of the mean value theorem. So that's the kind of stuff that you want to look for when you do this. Um, okay, so if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like or commenting or subscribing to my channel. I have lots of other videos that I'll be creating on this kind of stuff, and your support really means a lot to me. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next video.